Welcome to today's presentation, Using DN Simple with Chef. Let's go ahead and get started. JJ, why don't you kick us off by telling our audience what we'll be covering here today? Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is JJ Asgar. As, as Jamie introduced me to, I am a partner architect uh, at Chef Software. Um, if we go ahead and go to the next slide, which is this one. There we go. Uh, as you'll see, we're going to go over some, some introductions, kind of introduce uh, both me and David to, to you all. Then we're going to talk about um, DNS at, at your company and uh, why you should probably need to know about DNS and why it does. Uh, then we're going to go a little bit deeper into why use DN simple, um, mainly because, well, that was the, uh, the presentation, right? And then we're going to talk about the integration between uh, Chef and DN Simple, where you'll, uh, you, you'll get to see a little bit more of the demo and the, um, the ability to actually show the integration. Then we're going to go into the next, next opportunities to be able to grow from there. We're going to touch on the Chef Partner Cookbook Program, um, which is a, a program that we're trying to evangelize a little bit more, and DN Simple is our DN Simple is one of the, um, the premier um, members of that. And then we're going to go into some Q&A. So once again, let me uh, introduce myself. Again, I'm JJ uh, at JJ Asgar, Chef, Partner Architect. Um, uh, I've been with Chef for about four years now, uh, or almost four years. I've been bounced around um, quite a bit inside of the company, um, but I, I really do uh, love what I do. And this is David. Hey, David. Hi, JJ. Uh, my name is David Arrington, as introduced. I'm with DN Simple. I am one of the operation engineers here, uh, and I'm uh, on the internet pretty much everywhere you can find as at only have can. So, David, I gotta ask, why is it only have can? Oh, uh, you know what? This is this is a great story, and I'll tell you what. Uh, it's, I'm only have cans because I only have cans. I have cans from the floor stacked up all the way to the ceiling. I work at a cannery, not a cantery. A cantery seems like a bad, scary place to work. So if you need something, I can take care of that for you. Oh, that's awesome. I love that story. It's, 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 it's so, so empowering. It's, it's beautiful. It's, it's one of those things that I like to, to say to myself a lot and just Got to keep in that positive side of life. <laughs> awesome. So let's uh, let's talk about. So so David, wh why should people listen to us? I mean, we're just two two random people in a webinar. Um, you know, a nice picture of a cat and a squirrel. W w I think why why thing. listen to us for this? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we care about making sure that you can automate and make sure that everything works correctly. I've been working with Chef for about five, four or five years now. I've been working with DN Simple for two years. Um, and we, we both really care about making sure that you can automate and have high ability with everything. And that, that's what I think. All right, all right, that makes sense. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and pair it and say again, yes, um, being that I do work for an automation company, uh, I do like automating things. That makes life uh, much better when you can do repeatable things to make sure it comes out every single way, every every time you do it. Um, also, I, I got to say, one of the advantages of uh, listening to, to at least me talk about this stuff, and I'm, I'm assuming David too, because you did write it, uh, the integration that the, the between Chef and, and being Simple is, is premier. And it is one of the gold standards that um, I, I genuinely think that by, by us showing this off to our audience, they will see what could be one of the, uh, see, see where they could leverage it inside of their companies. Seem reasonable? I, I agree. Uh, I think it's a great resource <laughs> for everyone who wants to see how to have community cookbooks uh, in, in the partner program as well. Awesome. Well, okay. So let's, let's start from the ground up here because, you know, there's this thing out on the internet. I don't know. I, I hear that this thing called DNS with everything going on. Why, wh what is DNS, David, and why should I care? Well, um, 
DNS is how, two things. It's one, it's how your computers talk to each other and find each other. It's not required for that unless you really love having a huge host file that you share between all those systems. Uh, I, I've, been told, I've been told that host files can get pretty hairy, but, you know, it's a good way to send Facebook to, what, 127.001 when you're trying to work? That's right. Um, <laughs> but the other thing that DNS is, and this is where we come in, is DNS is also how your customers contact you in the end. Your customers, you never want your customers to have to type, you know, 123.456. etc. No, you, and that's not a valid IP address, but the idea is that you want to be able your customers just to type chef.io or when they're running commands, access api.beinsimple.com. Um, and so it's very important that you have high availability and guarantee that everything is up to date at all times with your DNS. So uh, this this uh, little image on the left-hand side here, road trips will never be the same. W w what is this exactly? So uh, this is the promo poster for our little comic book we have called How DNS Dot Works. And that's a URL you can go to, uh, How DNS Dot Works. And that is, it has, it's a road trip, it has jetpacks, and it has pizza, which those are all three amazing things that I love. And what it does is in fun, easy to understand terms, it explains exactly how DNS works at its core fundamental level. I love showing this off to people because it's a really fun thing and it's, it's an, a great resource to just kind of learn something you might not have known about what you do constantly every day, which is make DNS lookups. So I, I realize this is a, a leading question and we are having a conversation of a webinar, but I'm gonna ask this anyway. Who's, who's this little guy at the bottom here? He's, he's, I've seen a yellow, yellow guy also. But there's this red guy and there's another, another, another little uh, server looking guy. Can, can you tell us about who they are? So this red little guy is one of our favorite mascots of ours that I, I, I completely love them and you'll, you'll see it here in the slides a bunch. This is Tiny P and he represents the resolver that exists on your computer and all the other computers that you have. Uh, he resolves everything and so he ends up going on this journey to go find records. Uh, in the end, he finds the yellow server called Trusty uh, and Trusty is that authoritative DNS uh, that returns the re records for all the different stuff that you want. So, so, so just to just to make sure people understand, the resolver is someone that goes find something, and a the trusty or the what was that? Authoritative the resolver, the DNS. Resolver and authoritative, authoritative DNS is the one that actually has the the entry point, or the the name or the IP address. Yes. Right, and that leads us right, of course, into you know what does. D and simple do. Uh, we hey. are, <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, we are not <laughs> like a local resolver company for your for your company. Like we don't replace a public resolver, your ISP's local resolver. We're authoritative DNS, um, and we believe that we do authoritative DNS very well. Uh, so um, we have five points of presence across the world, multiple data centers on our own hardware, all hosting authoritative DNS for your company so that when your customers go to look up chef.io or dnsimple.com, this is where we provide that service. And we have a great API, and of course, as you're about to see, that cookbook. All right. So I might be skipping ahead here on our questions, but I'm gonna ask anyway. You, you said that they're, you're an external resolver. What happens if my company have internal resolvers or things like that? How, how does DN Simple and my internal resolvers work exactly? So we're never gonna replace your internal resolvers. Like a lot of people use Active Directory or sometimes for your automation systems, you'll have etcd. We don't replace that. Um, that's not really what we're trying to, you'll, you'll probably still want stuff like that. Uh, but what we do is we prov provide that 
external DNS. So that all of the records that you want to have public and available, we're the ones who can make sure that those are highly available and respond as fast as possible. So just, just to reiterate, it's how my customers get to my websites, not how my internal servers talk to each other? Is that accurate? Well, well, I'm going to admit we use our service for all of our internal servers. Uh, there's a lot of different okay. ways that you can handle this. Um, but the idea is, is that all of the DNS that you hand us is external DNS. These are public records that can be looked up. Um, and so if you're okay with a large part of your DNS being available, uh, a lot of people will use a different domain name. Um, they'll just buy a separate domain name and put all of their internal machines on that separate domain name that's not related to your public domain. That's a very popular thing people love to do. And the reason why is because you get that super highly available DNS that we can provide without having to worry about you know your SUD server going somewhere or you know any other problems that can crop up. Oh, interesting. Cool. So let's ask why Chef and DN Simple? And this is this is uh, this is Trusty right here, right? This is Trusty right here, and this is our our slogan. Domain management automation. So we don't just want to manage your domains. We want to automate the management of your domains. And we think that's so important because DNS is super fiddly and it's dangerous to break, it, but it's super important for everyone to be able to communicate to your stuff. And so we feel that automation is the best way to ensure that everything works reliably. Um, so the reason why Chef is because Chef is so amazing for doing inimpotent runs, making sure that everything is consistent and deployed across the board. And by tying in your DNS settings to those Chef runs, you can guarantee that all your DNS records are set pragmatically on provision. So question. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about the, the integration that we're going to talk about? Is this just a simple cookbook or is there a lot of work involved around this? Like how do we, uh, how, how is the integration done exactly? So the integration we're specifically talking about now is the cookbook, which is just a simple cookbook resource that we will be showing off in just a moment in the demo. Uh, we have a full API for those people who want to develop an entire application and have tie-ins to set up, provision, destroy, all these kind of record, you know, domain management. You can get very complex into that, but that's not really what we're trying to show off now. We're trying to show off how simple it can be, and we're all about making things simple. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll put Sounds it in good. the name. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well. Um, let's go ahead and, oops, I'm trying to hit the buttons here. Shall we go off to the demo and show off what's going on here? I think we should. Um, I, okay. I think this is the big highlight here. Let me share this real quick. Um, and hopefully uh, the cool live view should be up of, of my screen. Um, uh, this is my, um, this is just a cookbook here. As you can see, I have a few extra shell files to help me up. But this is just a standard uh, wrapper cookbook around our, um, our thing. So here's actually the recipe. I want to actually show you this. Um, this is all it really takes. So we've wrapped our gem, our Ruby gem, in a chef cookbook, and we've just offered up a resource, DN simple underscore record. And so all we have to do is pick the name, and this is going to be something I'm going to pass through a script. Uh, the name I'm going to control right now is DN simple dot sexy because here at Dimple. <laughs> and simple, we think we make domain management automation kind of sexy. 
Uh, and I'm just going to create an A record with the a, pulling so, so, uh, the O item. Let mm -hmm. me ask you a question real quick, David. Is it just A records, or can you do other types of records? Oh, no, you can create all sorts of records, uh, all your standard DNS records, and then some extra records that we've created, uh, which will help simplify DNS for a lot of our users. We have things like Apex records, which allow you to set uh, CNAME style records for the domain tops, which is something technically you cannot do. Um, we also have pool records, which allow you to have multiple C names that we round robin, uh, and our URL record, which is a simple redirector uh, that you can set up. So the, the cookbook will set any of the type of records, and it'll attempt to validate them as you set the content using the, the API. Um, but for this demo, I think an A record with just the OHI information of the node's IP address is the simplest way to make sure this record will always match the machine's IP address. Nice, nice. Um, so talking about this TTL, what, why are we defaulting at 60 here? What, well, can we change that? We definitely can. Um, TTL is very important if you're gonna have records that are gonna be moving around rapidly. I'm putting just a standard 60 second TTL here just so it can be pretty rapid. Um, but a lot of people still set their TTI, TTL very high in case you have a record that's not going to be bouncing around a lot. Um, we support having a 60-second TTL, um, which is technically the lowest you can kind of, that's globally supported. And this allows for a very rapid movement of machines and records for you. So uh, in this, in this uh, sorry, sorry, just real quick, in this recipe mm -hmm. that I see here, which is a pretty standard recipe, which is great, where do we put this in our run list normally? Do we put this at the, be the beginning or the end? Like being that the TTL is so, if, I, if I'm in a very elastic environment, where should I have it? So what we do internally is we set the record at the front of the run list so that by the time the provision is completed, the record is already propagating um, oh. and usually completely propagated. So we use this cookbook internally for many of our systems in order to control records. And we, we put that towards the very beginning. We, we set the host names and then right after we control and verify our host names and our chef runs, we put the, our DN simple records. So, uh, and then just to highlight how this works, uh, the rest of this recipe is just using the HTTPD cookbook, uh, which I got from the supermarket. And then I just create our index.html. So, this is, uh, this is always the, the, the most exciting part. This is a live demo uh, and I, so what I'm going to do is do a kitchen run, and this kitchen run is going to use the kitchen digital ocean driver to build a box in digital ocean. Uh, I'm going to pick a name at random that I haven't used before, just to bring some authenticity. So this is going to be a demo for Jamie, uh, who introduced us at the beginning of this demo. Um, and the, the demo.sh just sets the environment variables and then runs kitchen. Uh, pass it so that the cookbook can see the Jamie name. Um, and now we get to watch the illustrious kitchen run. Please work, please uh, work, woo. please work. Yeah. Where are we building this kitchen run? So this kitchen is running on my laptop right now. Uh, it's I see the digital ocean created. Now we're SSHing. Oh, the, oh. the, the, oh, the the droplets going to where, where what backend? That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, it's uh it's doing a Ubuntu box in NYC. Ah. So right now, the larger ones. Yes. 
and you can see on screen there's only three cookbooks in the entire run list, the DN Simple demo, the DN Simple and HTTPD. Um, and I'm, I'm running dangerously, so I'm installing Chef Latest. You can <laughs> see right here on the screen for those watching, it's created the, the Jamie record and is now setting up all of that uh, Apache goodness. All right. All right. And with that were and run, um, we have now created this record. Um, and my little shell script, of course, tells me which URL I should be visiting. So I'm going to switch over to Safari here real quick. and then everyone gets to watch me type. That's always fun. <laughs> Domain Management Automated with Chef. Welcome to our webinar, Jamie. Yay. So I mean, Yay. This, this really just highlights in, in exactly how simple it is to provision DNS records using your Chef run, which I think is so valuable to ensure that records are always up to date and current with where boxes could be. So anytime a change happens, anytime you build a new box, bing, bam, boom, everything's built up. So cool, guys. Thank you for uh, my own special <laughs> good little stuff. demo here. Really good amazing. Stuff. So I'm going to end our scarcing so we can go to the, the next slide. All right. We should be able to see the demo slide again. So I'm going to go ahead and go one more. So that's cool, David. What else? What else are we going to talk about? Well, what I really wanted to call out was that this cookbook is very stable for managing your DNS. But one of the things we want to add to this is any other features that people want in the domain management space. Right now, you can create, delete, update your records. But we also have a little beta in there for actually downloading certificate material. So if you purchase a certificate from us uh, and leave it in our system, uh, you can download that those certificate materials directly to your server using our cookbook. Uh, so every time a chef run is, we check for the certificate, download it, and, uh, and then put it in place so that you can check for those file changes and then reload services as necessary. This is still a brand new feature we're working into the cookbook. We haven't tested a lot, but if people want to test that out and play with it, give us feedback. And of course, it is a public cookbook. Uh, you know, we would love to have more people checking that out. And then of course, offering feedback. If there's features or anything people want, we definitely uh, would love to see more of that. Are you uh, accessible through the Chef Community Slack? Yeah, are you on the Chef Community Slack? I am always on the Chef Community Slack, uh, as at only have can. Uh, you can also poke me on Twitter, but the Chef Community Slack is a great place to talk to me uh, and the rest of the DN Civil team. Um, you can just poke me, and, and I would be more than happy to answer questions uh, with anything re resolving the cookbook or using it. Awesome, awesome. Um, so we briefly mentioned uh, a few, uh, actually no, we went over all those. Awesome. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take the reins here and talk about the Chef Partner Cookbook Program for a few moments. Um, and also we're gonna be coming up to our Q&A here in a little bit. So hopefully you'll start thinking about some questions to ask me and David, just a hint right there. Um, but as a chef practitioner, you've probably used the supermarket. Um, hey, David, do you mind bringing up the supermarket for me here in a second? Um, I can definitely do that for you. Awesome, thank you. And maybe, maybe even the end simple cookbook too while you're at it. Um, but as a chef practitioner, over time, you've probably gone to the supermarket to get um, uh, cookbooks. And a long time ago, the supermarket was, or the supermarket still is, a, uh, a way that anyone can put up a cookbook to do some type of, some type of deployment of something. Um, we, one of the, um, 
rites of passages for most most um, at least Rails developers using Chef was to write a, a Redis cookbook, for instance. Well, over time, we've had some um, companies come to us, say, hey, Chef, we would really, really, really like to say that this is our integration and this is our cookbook. Now, DN Simple, as I was saying at the at the opening of this, is one of our uh, one of our gold standards at this. But as you notice, there's this little badge right there, um, which shows it's a Chef Partner Cookbook, or Chef Certified Partner Cookbook, um, where we have a rigorous um, rubric of the best practices that we have, and we approve it on both our side as Chef and the uh, the company. So when XYZ company comes to us and says, hey, we'd like to get approved to say that this is our, our integration and not something from um, some person, uh, some other person out there, we, we create that. Uh, if you go, and hopefully David's seeing this here, and click on advanced options, just like he is right there, and then partner on the far left, and then hit go, you'll see we have about 33 Yes, good, 33. 33 cookbooks who have gone completely through this process to say that yes, these are the cookbooks that these different companies use and are their integrations. For instance, you see CyberArk there, you see Datadog, and Simple. Um, Elasticsearch is in there also. So if you are planning on looking for this, the support from the company, these are the integrations that we talk about. Uh, if you're a vendor, by any chance, uh, listening to this this presentation, uh, David, do you mind going to the, the partner um, page for me? Sure. Just one second. Thank you, sir. Come on, computer. There we go. We have a, a dedicated page here. Uh, for the Chef Partner cookbook, uh, cookbook Program. As you can see, we have highlighted a few of the integrations there. Um, if you are a vendor watching this uh, and you would like to continue down this path, um, please go to the site and click on that link uh, and go through the process. Uh, we, we, we want more of these cookbooks because we want the best for our customers, and I'm imagining you would like that also yourself. Um, yeah. Uh, awesome. And, Hopefully, sure, go ahead. I, I just want to say on the side of the, the cookbook developer as, as the vendor themselves, the Incible really values the Chef Partner Cookbook Program because just like JJ said, not only do we get to stamp a cookbook and say this is something that we can support and you can come to us for help about and it's something that we can maintain, it, it allows everyone to see that. But it also gave us access to Chef in helping develop this and helping test this. Um, there's a lot of great resources in Chef that really helped us test out, build up the frameworks to make sure that our cookbook was properly test and reliable for everyone, not just by live testing and internally for ourselves, but in a way that we can show to everyone. And I gotta ask, David, is it a pretty painful process? Is there a lot of backwards and forwards, or or did we're going through as a vendor? Was this okay? I thought the process was great, in my opinion, uh, because we were wrapping a gem. There was some complications, like it's it's a kind of a difficult, strenuous process to wrap a gem in a resource. But Chef was with us for every step of the way, helping us learn how to test this and get it all working, and that was so valuable. Nice. That actually means a lot. Um, we, on the chef side, we really do try to make this as painless as possible for the vendors, um, just because we like to make it. You know, we want to. We, we want the best for our customers. Awesome. Well, um, I guess we should go on to the next section, which should be clicky on this little question, dude. Thing, okay. maybe. There we go. There it is. Can we see this? Uh, yep. Uh, so, Q and A yep. time. Perfect. Q and A. So we, we have three questions, um, and I'm I'm calling out uh, people to who are listening or um, or watching this live. Can you please put more questions in? We'd love to answer more. When we start with the first one, 
So, David, which mm -hmm. bind servers do you support? So, here's the thing. We actually don't use bind at all. Uh, we actually use Earl DNS, which is an authoritative name surfer written in Erlang. Uh, this allows us to handle extremely high throughput uh, across all of our machines. Uh, we support bind files as an import. So if you have a bind file, you can import that into our system. But we internally, we, we actually use an Erlang authoritative name server in order to host out everything. And it, it strips out a lot of the extraneous functionality that's not needed to host a bind, to, to host an authoritative. Um, and, and so that, that's very helpful. And that is an open source project that you can go and run uh, and, and try out for yourself. We are not the only people who use URL DNS. Awesome. So um, to follow up that, it, everything is, uh, is the cookbook fully featured? Um, is there delegation and things like that enabled? I'm sorry, can you, what do you mean by delegation? Uh, well, I'm, I'm assuming the, the question in, um, from, from the, DNS, the, the DNS, DNS server, can you use the cookbook to import, no, no that doesn't make any sense, does it? I'm no, not 100% sure, I'm sorry. No, it, it's fine, uh, if, if, uh, if you wanna, if the person who asked the question wants to post a follow-up for more clarification, I can totally uh, offer that up. But um, yeah, we, we don't use bind internally at all. Okay. Um, so, so the TLDs out there, um, can you provision from other countries? Do you have to be in the US? Can you so, provision, uh, sure, go ahead. Um, we can, we love TLDs. We love playing with all the different fun TLDs. We, as you can see with uh, how a DNS dot work. Uh, currently we support 244 top level domains. Uh, if you go to dnsimple.com slash TLDS, that's dnsimple.com slash TLDs, you can actually see the, the complete list of TLDs that we support, as well as all of the costs involved with each one. We support many of the company-based TLDs, uh, but we don't currently support all of them, unfortunately. We're currently working with multiple providers to try and get a lot of different other ones. Um, I see in the question there was a call out of two specific ones, .do and .co. We do support .co, we do not support .do. Cool. Cool. Um, so, I'm supposed to ask a question here to keep the questions going, and I'm completely blanking. That's so embarrassing. Um, is there anything you'd like to just kind of reiterate again, David, about uh, DN Simple and, and Chef? You know, one of the things that I do want to call out is if you find that the, the Chef cookbook is too simplistic for your needs, uh, you have far more complex needs than that, we do have a fully featured API, uh, and we also have integrations in many languages. We have a, a Go, we have Nginx, I'm sorry, Node.js. <laughs> uh, we also have uh, a Ruby Gem. We, we have a lot of different integrations, and we're always looking to grow out more of them. Uh, and of course, there's just that full API. So if you're just willing to just make the, the raw API calls and stuff like that, we can totally uh, handle that for you. And of course, if you always have questions, you can always just contact me at, on the Chef Community Slack or email us, and we'd be more than happy to help you out. Awesome. Well, David, what's this website? Is this an important website? This is, I think, is a great website. Uh, it's dnsimple.com <laughs> slash chef. Uh, and what this is, is this is a little splash page that we made that highlights the 
the Chef Partner Cookbook Program from our end. Uh, it also has a lot of little examples and great showings off of, of just different ways to use our cookbook to set everything up. And of course, it has a link to our, our cookbook in the supermarket. Awesome. awesome. So if you're interested in well, trying this out, I really recommend that site. Yes. And finally, uh, I would like to also just say that we'll sit here for just a second after we're saying, uh, just when I finish talking, if you have any last questions, um, please post them now. Otherwise, um, uh, this seems like the end. Thank you so much, JJ and David. That was an awesome demo um, and great information for folks. Uh, we'd also like to thank our audience for your live participation today. Um, we, of course, hope you found value in, for, in the information that was presented. And if you like what you saw, we encourage you to share the recorded presentation with your teammates or professional networks. The on-demand version should be available by tomorrow, and we'll email you as soon as it's ready, along with some additional um, links and resources. So thanks again for your time, and have a wonderful day.